All right, we're going to discuss everyday use, which is a story by Alice Walker. Alice Walker is a prominent African-American writer, and most of her stories have to do in some way with social justice and the fight for African-American equality, and this story is a great example of that struggle. Um, it's set during the American South. It's not, it doesn't state specifically where the story takes place. And though the story is written in the 70s, it's set a couple of decades earlier during the height of the Civil Rights Movement. So this story is written during the same, it's set rather during the same time period as um, the Battle Royal. This story um, has in its background, it doesn't discuss this issue directly, but it does discuss it indirectly. Uh, during the Civil Rights Movement, um, most people think about Martin Luther King as being the leader of the Civil Rights Movement, but uh, equally as influential as King was Malcolm X, and Malcolm X led what was called the Black Muslim Movement. Um, and during this time period, Malcolm X encouraged African Americans to uh, go back to their roots as a way of finding equality. So uh, he believed that uh, Christianity was the religion of the oppressor. Um, so basically the slaveholders were Christian and they turned black slaves into Christians when, when the initial black slaves probably practiced Islam. And so Malcolm X encouraged um, activi black activists to get back in touch with their Muslim roots. And this often meant choosing a Muslim name uh, wearing traditional African clothing and uh, abiding by a more traditional Muslim diet. And so you can see that um, Dee is trying to do these things. So she changes her name to Wangaro and uh, is dressed in traditional African clothing and, and African jewelry when she comes to her mother's house and she has a boyfriend who is also um, practicing Islam. Uh, the most famous member of the of the Black Muslim movement was, of course, Muhammad Ali, whose birth name was Cassius Clay. And Lee um, Ali, rather, um, under the the guidance of Malcolm X, converted to Islam and changed his name to Muhammad Ali. Um, and, and so D is is kind of part of this cultural change that's going on. So again, the story doesn't directly talk about the Black Muslim movement, but of course, D is part of it. So it helps us to know what was going on. I want you to think of this whole story as a struggle between opposing forces. So uh, every issue in the story has a counterweight. Uh, the mama, who is the main character, has two daughters. She has Maggie on the one hand, who's kind of an unattractive, simple-minded girl uh, who knows how to do things with her hands so she can cook and knit, uh, and, and she has that kind of know-how, versus Dee, who is beautiful and intelligent, uh, educated, um, so we have these, these two opposing forces of daughters. Uh, we also have this idea of wisdom versus intelligence. So if you think about wisdom, wisdom is something in a way that we're born with or that we just pick up along the course of our lives. So you might think of Maggie as being a wise character. So she understands herself. She knows a lot about the world she lives in. Um, she knows how to do important tasks. And then you have intelligence, which is something more like what we learn from books and from school. And so Dee is very intelligent. She's very well read. She has a lot of cultural influences. Um, so we have this pull between wisdom and intelligence. Of course, given the title, we have this idea of everyday use versus memorializing. So if you think about the quilts, um, they have two choices about what to do with them. They can put them to everyday use where they hold them and use them and probably tear them up a little versus kind of framing them and putting them on the wall never to be used again but to be remembered forever. So even though the story seems to be about the two daughters, the mama is the main character and so she's the one that has to kind of struggle between uh, these opposing forces. Remember that Mama is a round character, and we talked about round characters as being dynamic, meaning that they're different at the end of the story than they are at the beginning. So something in Mama at the beginning of the story changes and by the time she gets to the end. I want you to think about these themes. So we have the theme of heritage, and we're dealing specifically in the story with African-American heritage. And we have two ways that the characters are going about appreciating their heritage. So Mama and Maggie uh, live in a simple house and use very old items. So they use items made by their mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers, and they still know the same recipes, and they still know the same old uh, church songs and those kinds of things, and that's how they preserve their heritage, by using it um, and keeping it present. Dee wants to celebrate her heritage in a different way, so she wants to kind of treat the past like it's in the past, 
uh, and appreciate, appreciate her heritage as something that's kind of over and done with. So the history of slavery and the history of struggle, she wants to kind of say, let's just frame that like we can talk about it over dinner, but I want to move on to this more authentic kind of African self. Um, another theme in the story is self-awareness. So in many ways, we might feel sorry for Maggie and look up to Dee because Maggie is poor and unattractive and not very smart, and Dee is attractive and, and you know, going to marry well, and she's very intelligent. But the difference between them is self-awareness. So we're told several times in the story that Maggie understands herself. She knows her, her lot in life. She understands uh, you know, what the world has to offer her. And she doesn't, she's not mad. She doesn't regret it. She's not angry about it. She accepts herself. She's aware of herself. D, on the other hand, we get the impression that in a lot of ways she's pretending to be something she's not. So um, she's kind of treating her humble beginnings almost like they, they belonged to somebody else in a different life. Uh, she has, she's wearing what amounts almost to a costume. So she doesn't really um, dress like her family or like she was raised to dress. Uh, so in many ways, she is not very self-aware uh, and do doesn't realize that the things she's doing that she thinks display pride are actually kind of shameful. So she's shaming her family. And finally, as we've mentioned already, we have this struggle between wisdom and intelligence. Important symbols in the story. Um, you have the house, which is uh, symbolic in many ways. So we talk about, uh, you know, Maggie and Mama being self-aware. They're okay with themselves. They don't need a fancy house. They do try to spruce it up before Dee gets there. But notice that when Dee gets there, uh, she kind of looks down on the house. She takes Polaroids of it the same way that you would if you passed like a um, a rundown airplane wreck on the side of the highway. Like she thinks it's interesting and cute, but she doesn't think of it as belonging to her and her family. Obviously, the quilts are very important, again, because they ask us to, to decide, is it better uh, and more honorable to, to acknowledge our heritage, heritage by continuing to use it and continuing to interact with it, or to kind of frame it and act like it's finished? And names, of course, are symbolic in the story. Dee wants to change her name because... Uh, she thinks of Dee as basically going all the way back to, to a name given to her by her family by a slave owner. And so like Malcolm X and, uh, and many of the black Muslims, she chooses a different name that she thinks better encompasses her identity. Um, and of course, there's nobility in that, but she's also giving away part of her heritage by dismissing her name. Uh, I want to talk to you finally about this idea of epiphany, and I've defined epiphany for you over here on the right. An epiphany is a sudden, striking realization. Sometimes the, an epiphany comes out of nowhere, but sometimes, and more often, an epiphany is brought on by some person or action, something somebody says or does. You'll notice in detective stories, often the detective will see some things the audience finds insignificant, but whatever it is leads the detective to an epiphany that solves the case. So if you ever read Sherlock Holmes or watched House on TV, uh, often the detectives will see something you know, in passing, like maybe they see a commercial and it doesn't mean anything to the people around them, but it causes the character to have a realization all of a sudden of you know, what solves the mystery or what helps them make their decision. So Mama's big struggle in the story is kind of deciding which is the better of her two daughters. Um, at the beginning of the story, you'll notice that Mama is trying to impress Dee. She has cleaned the house up to be neat as a pen. Uh, she has these dreams about uh, coming out with Dee on a TV show. And, and Mama, in the dream, Mama pictures herself as being much more beautiful so that Dee will be proud of her. But by the end of the story, after Dee has behaved so badly and uh, insisted on having these quilts, Mama has an epiphany. She has a moment. She even describes it in the story as this moment kind of like something she feels in church where all of a sudden she's struck with the realization. And she realizes that really the, the daughter of hers that is the wise daughter is Maggie. Um, you know, she, Mama says it doesn't matter if Maggie tears up the quilts because she knows how to make new ones, right? She has the knowledge passed on to her through generations uh, that ultimately matters more than trying to preserve uh, one empty memory. So this is a very complicated story, and, and certainly both of the daughters have their um, their their value and, and their, their good points, and, and there are many things that Dee may be right about. Maybe her mother and sister are backwards and behind, but in many ways... Uh, the simpler characters, Mama and Maggie, are the ones who really possess wisdom. So that's something for you to think about going forward. And of course, as always, there are more symbols and themes than the ones mentioned here, but these should be enough to get you really thinking about the story in a critical way.